Check it out. It's the one and only DJ screaming. You know, anytime I'm in tune, I'm in tune to Grip Magazine because they make a crazy noise out here in the streets. Salute to y'all. Where did the name come from? Um, basically, man, I was influenced by watching like Yo! TV raps and a lot of people on, on, on the TV screen just like other DJs and uh, just hearing DJs on, on, on records scratching and so forth. And I remember... Uh, definitely a defining moment in my life was the movie Juice, you know what I'm saying, and just just watching, just just watching Juice, man, and just watching Q and Juice was just one of the moments in just hip-hop, and it just inspired me uh, to want to be a DJ, then I was fortunate enough to see a, a live DJ for the first time in my childhood, uh, probably at the age of like 10, 11 years old, something like that, and the DJ was just going crazy and had so much energy. And I told myself at that point, like, there's something about me and that that connects. I know I love music, but there's something about, like, I have to do that. I don't know if I'm going to be good at it, but I have to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, basically, man, my, my journey is always one. I tell people, uh, one of some turntables. My parents not wanting to hear nothing about no turntables. And me not eating lunch at school for, like, literally, like, three, four months every day saving up for some turntables, like literally starving so I could get my first pair of turntables, you know what I'm saying, true story. And uh, even aside of that, um, the name Scream it really just comes from always kind of, um, you know, early on, just kind of like just satisfying women at parties. Like I was the type of person that I could be playing like the hypest club music, but at the peak of the party, I'll play R. Kelly. If it's going to make the girls happy, I'm going to play R. Kelly, you know what I'm saying? So when I did that, what kind of, you know, separated me from other DJs at the time, I'll play a slow jam at the middle of the night, and then girls will, like, scream and pass out and start crying. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was really emotional. So I remember at the end of one party, uh, I'll break it down, and my partner's like, yo, man, you like, you make them scream, you know what I'm saying? Like, you making the girls scream, man. Like, you, you, like, we rock with you, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's something that I've always... Um, even through my journey and mixtapes and everything, like, I try not to forget females. I try not to forget diversity. I try to kind of, like, cater to everyone, and it's impossible to make everybody happy, but that's kind of what the name means to me now. Like, it's just about um, knowing that what you do is for the people, and don't be so self-centered and just full of yourself. You know what I'm saying? If it's a record I hate, but the people love it, I'm going to play it. You know what I'm saying? i got to follow the people to remain relevant. That's how I feel. Um, you're on 96.7 The Beat, and you got your own show, mm -hmm. and it's on a uh, Sirius XM. Okay, so 92, 3, 96, 7 The Beat, iHeartRadio, Hood Rich Radio, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Now you can get all the Hood Rich Radio you want, and of course, Sirius XM Hip Hop Nation, Wednesday nights, raw, uncut, uncensored, you know what I'm saying? Sirius XM Hip Hop Nation, uh, 10 p.m. to midnight, Wednesday nights. That's how we do Hood Rich Radio, you dig? And make sure you check out the all-new www.hoodrichradio.com. Got to get my promo in. <laughs> How has the uh, landscape of hip-hop evolved over the uh, past few years? Um, You know, I feel like it's, it's a new generation, and it's time for a new generation of uh, producers and artists, and we're seeing that. And I think that there has been a lot of um, confusion between um, a lot of classic hip hop people and OGs in the new generation. I think there's a big misunderstanding. And I always tell, like, see, I don't, I'm going to be honest, like, I don't get the old nigga stamp. Like, you know, some of these young niggas be like, oh, that's an old nigga. I don't fuck with him. And I'll be in the studio, like, so, so what am I? Like, nah, you like legendary. You know what I'm saying? You like classic. You ain't old. And I guess it's just how you act, you know what I'm saying? Like, and how, how you, like, an old nigga is just a nigga to me that hates on a young nigga. You can be a young nigga and be old. You feel what I'm saying? Like, don't be old and sour and mad because you're not doing your thing and somebody else doing their thing and they fly. Be happy. You know what I'm saying? Let's show love to each other. So I think the biggest thing that's kind of holding us back when you bring that question up is, um, you know, we got to embrace each other, like, in the 90s, they embraced the 80s, and that kept going. But then now it's like, now they don't really embrace the older people per se. And that's only because I kind of get it when I'm around the young people. It's like, they don't show no love. Anybody know Scream? I show love. You know what I'm saying? I show love to DJs. I show love to young people because I didn't have that. You understand what I'm saying? So I always said, when I get in a position, I want to help people. 
you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be greedy. I want to be selfish. So I think that that's one of the biggest things about the landscape of hip hop. But I personally wholeheartedly, even though people have their different opinions and things that they want to say, I think it's dope. I think the young energy is dope. I think it's just fly. I think fashion is gone to a space that I may not agree with, but it's dope for like what it is. Jeans you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not me, but I respect it. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember when we did crazy things with our hair and all this other stuff and wore big white tees to our knees and all that type of stuff when we was young. So the beautiful thing about hip hop culture is it's like almost the most universal expression that exists. It's like when, when you go to Paris, when you go overseas, like I've been and you DJ, you see like, this is really like one language that can, everybody can coexist with. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? This universal language. So that's my answer. Um, a lot of women are trying to break into uh, this area of DJing. How do you feel about women <laughs> in this area? It's quite a few out there that's good. So That's why I don't show as much love. And it's not just the women. I just... um. The culture of DJing to me is serious, mm -hmm. and I live it, and I breathe it, and I sleep it. So do you I, think that they... Um, well, well, some of them make it look good, but it don't sound good. Uh, you know what I'm okay. saying? Just to be completely honest, and I wouldn't disrespect the culture of rapping by rapping. I played yeah. around before. We all have. It's fun. I wouldn't disrespect the culture of basketball or football by saying I'm, I'm a professional basketball or football player. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't disrespect the culture of modeling by being a model. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, maybe I look good enough to be a model. Maybe I don't, but that's not what I do. So I'm not mad at the hustle. Mm -hmm. I'm a very big fan of the hustle. So if you're getting your money, you know what I'm saying, uh, I salute that. I respect that. Um, if you're a fly chick and you want to DJ, all I'm going to say is learn how to really DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like don't, 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 don't stink it up. Like learn how to rock a party. Learn how to, learn how to really DJ. You know what I'm saying? Do you have a favorite female DJ by any chance? I mean, you know, I always have to shout out family. Shout out to Princess Cut. You know what I'm saying? One of our own. Her is official. Uh, fly chick. Dope DJ. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Speaker Fox in the ATL too. Definitely does her thing. You know what I'm saying? When you go check her out. And there are some others I could go on and on that are dope. And there are some that's not so dope. You know what I mean? But we're not here for negative energy. You sure we're not? We're here to show love. Um... Do you feel as if uh, DJs get their uh, proper respect in this industry? Mm, that's crazy. I was just interviewing Ross last week, and there was a little clip that went viral. And I think that if you look at um, Rick Ross, Sam Sneak, Future, DJ Esco, 2 Chainz, East Sud, uh, if you look especially at DJ Khaled, I think the ones that go co that, that command their respect get mm. it. It's kind of like saying, does the woman get a respect that she's supposed to get? Well, it's kind of like sometimes you got to demand your respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the cool person is the rapper. That's the person we see in the forefront. But you, do you know that there's so much behind that rapper to drive it? Yeah. Producers included. You know what I'm saying? Um, Everybody uh, overlooks that aspect of the industry. You have to command your respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's it never, you know, just just a random, a random statement. Like, Obama gained his respect. They weren't just going to respect Obama. Like, even with, you know, sidebar, with Trump right now. Yo, you got to get your respect, bro. We don't like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But maybe in two years we'll love him more. Maybe we'll hate him more. Who knows? I don't know. But what I'm saying is, in this game, the game of whatever you do, you have to command your respect. Mm -hmm. You're not going to give you. No one's going to give you anything. People have to know that. You know what I mean? Um, you have uh, hosted mixtapes for Jeezy, Outkast, The Game, Gucci mm -hmm. Man, and many I others. Hosted, uh, a mixtape for Outkast. I just like to make that clear because I have not had the honor. I did a tribute to them and it became bigger than what I thought it would be. But everybody else you said I have done mixtape. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I haven't achieved Outkast and Jay Z yet. Yet. Are mixtapes as powerful as a marketing tool as it was before? I think they just translated into playlists. So you look at Apple Music and Spotify and all these different places and then people just do playlists and DJs still do playlists and I'm about to start doing some playlists. I think everything is just going digital. You know, it used to be mm -hmm. like I'll press up my CDs, go hustle on, pass them out, sell them, whatever the case is. But we just in a digital age. So I think that um, they're more relevant than ever. They just have been, um, you know, um, relabeled as a playlist. Anytime you see a playlist, that's just a mixtape. Now everybody can make a mixtape. You can make one, yeah. anybody can make one. It's just your playlist of your favorite songs. Will it have that element and that talk from a scream or another mixtape DJ? It won't have that feel. 
but that's another thing with the new generation. Like, they tell me shut up all the time. Shut up, we don't want to hear you. Technology is powerful these days. <laughs> Technology is powerful, you know what I'm saying? So, you have to move with the times for sure. Uh, what are some of the artists that you're working with now? Mm. Um, you know, in the Hood Rich circle, definitely want to shout out Hood Rich Pablo Juan, definitely doing his thing. Uh, Fader said he was going to be like one of the top artists this year, and he's definitely uh, showing and proving. Uh, shouts to Larry League, you know, saying Larry League is definitely doing that thing. They're like the new modern day Beastie Boys um, on the <laughs> pop side, you know what I'm saying? We got some amazing stuff coming uh, from our artist Camino, you know what I'm saying? And I definitely got to shout out HPG, which is our production squad, which is DJ Spins, Danny Wolf, uh, Dirty Costello, 1K, oh, if I'm not forgetting anybody, Spiffy Global. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but yeah, we got a lot, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot that we're working on. You got a lot of music in the tuck coming. Um, with artists like T.I., Killer Mike, uh, Rollo, um, Kodak Black, making socially conscious records, do you feel that artists have a duty to address these issues, or should they just remain neutral in the music? Yeah, I think that an artist has the duty to paint an honest picture, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So if your honest picture is, like a lot of people... Got mad at ASAP when he said what he said a while back. Like I really don't want to think about it. I really, I really don't like. I don't want to be bothered, and I necessarily agree. But if that's who you are and you just don't want to be bothered, then you have the right to it. But at the same time, a Colin Kaepernick said, "Look, I don't care how much money I'm making or what I'm doing. Yep. I'll, I'm bothered." You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that you have, as an artist, the job. Like I say again, to paint an honest picture. Don't get involved because you think it's the right thing to do get involved well, because it. you think like you really want to get involved if not then turn your head and be like i don't care just be honest because that's going to um control what kind of following and supporters you have don't do it because you want um you know the urban dollar or the urban support do it because wholeheartedly you care that um a black man was murdered by the police or this happened or that happened you know what I'm saying? Or any type of injustice or any type of anything that's crazy politically. We have our voice. There's, if nothing else, we're supposed to have the freedom of speech here, right? So we can say whatever we want. We're supposed to be able to do that, right? So it's like, paint an honest picture. You know what I'm saying? You know with the um, the bridge collapsing over there on 85. Yeah, Armageddon. Yes. <laughs> T.I. was talking about um, something was like fishy about it, and they tried to say it was like, you know, a drug user, you know, do you yeah. think they were trying to use that as like a scapegoat? Because I don't think that somebody with drugs can honestly what the blow that up. That's, that's one that I can't begin to sit down and put, like, I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah. Was it an attempt to take out a couple thousand people? Because it didn't work and God was powerful that day. God is always powerful, but jeesh, like, our bridge blew up. <laughs> Hello? And then people still getting ready for the club. Like, I gotta go to the club tonight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the bridge blew up party, you know what I'm saying? I got my hair together, the bridge blew up party. I'm like, yo, I'm in my house, the bridge blew up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm not I'm not this big conspiracy theory type person that's like everything that happens is a conspiracy. But hello, the bridge blew up. You know what I'm saying? Like, poof. And then the next day, all of a sudden, some crackhead or junkie was the one that blew it up, and they had explosives under the bridge like it's Batman. Like, Little pipes did it all, huh? <laughs> I honestly have not been in the state of fear for, like, nobody else was true. Even my own family was like, oh, yeah, whatever, bridges blow up, I guess. Like, the bridge blew up. And if anybody was driving, then they would have died. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so now you just drive over the bridge and pray and hope that it works you know what i'm saying if you wasn't um djing what do you what um do you think you would have been doing now as an alternative for a career i mean i have a degree from tuskegee university in mathematics and computer science so that's what i would be doing i went to alabama state university okay cool we, <laughs> we whipped y'all ass in something football football something? football that's yeah, it we whipped y'all ass that's it numerous times that's it yeah, that's but not cool. in track that's cool we'll take that <laughs> So with that uh, mathematics degree, mm -hmm. you would want to teach. I'm still, um, still one of my goals is to um, create some type of tutoring situation for the youth to not be so fearful of mathematics and numbers because everybody want money, but they're scared of numbers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So how can you have money, understand money, finances, interest rates, and so forth if you don't, if you're scared of math? 
you know what I'm saying? I think they make math this thing that's just so dreaded. It's like, oh, I don't want to go to math. Hey, math, they're going to make me count.